Welcome to the virtual tour of Resignifying Religion, featured in the Nora Eccles Harrison Museum of Art. NEMA exhibits modern and contemporary visual art and strives to foster conversations around contemporary society. The museum was founded in 1982 as a gift from Nora Eccles Treadwell Foundation and today holds over 5,000 artworks. Students at Utah State University are provided with educational opportunities through the museum. The curator of this exhibit is one of those students at USU. Let's head over to the exhibit to begin our tour. Rebecca Mathis is studying Latin American art here at USU. Rebecca has a passion for history and art, especially how it influences the modern world. As a student in the interior architecture and design program, she has found inspiration from artists and styles throughout history to influence her work. In a similar way, as she has studied Latin American art, she has noticed how artists have taken influences from the past, along with their current knowledge, to build a belief system for themselves. If you follow me, you'll see some artists who have done so. To give some context to the exhibition you will be viewing today, resignification is taking something from the past and making it new based on present knowledge and understanding. Resignifying religion examines this phenomenon as it concerns syncretic religions in Latin America. Religious syncretism is the blending of two or more religions and belief systems into one new religion. Most of the works featured in this exhibition were produced after the European conquest because of the significant rise in syncretic religions at this time. One of the goals of conquest was to convert indigenous peoples to Christianity. Nevertheless, most converts hung on to previous beliefs and resignified to fit their new knowledge. Artists today, in a similar way, are challenging organized religion and giving their take on what religion and truth are for them. Today, you'll see works of art that will have you questioning what you once thought about organized religion and what religious truth is. For many, truth has become something personal, not just a collective idea. As we walk through the exhibition, you'll see artists discovering religious personal truth and resignification of themselves. If you follow me, we will get started. The first piece in this exhibition is a sculpture known by the name of Las Limas Madonna. It was found in Veracruz, Mexico, and was created by the Olmecs around 3,000 years ago. Here we see a greenstone sculpture of a person holding a wear jaguar baby. The wear jaguar baby was a supernatural half-human and half-jaguar that the Olmecs worshipped. Wear jaguars may have been used to tell stories of spiritual journeys and human origins. The Olmecs were making intangible concepts of their religion tangible. For things they could not physically see, like the origin of humanity or a divine realm, they created a story for it that they could share with those around them. And to connect to divinity, they created a statue that represented it, both human and divine characteristics that bridged the gap between them and their gods. As their beliefs expanded outside of the realm of their reality, the Olmecs were able to re-signify by creating physical elements of divine realms such as the were jaguar baby. Next on our tour are two artworks produced shortly after the conquest entitled Immaculate Conception and Costa Painting. On the left is the Immaculate Conception by Juan Carrera. At the center of Carrera's painting is a depiction of the Virgin Mary. However, she is different from other portraits of her in the old world. She has a darker complexion and resembles the Virgin of Guadalupe. The Virgin of Guadalupe emerged in Mexico during the 1500s when a man by the name of Juan Diego was greeted by an apparition, the Virgin of Guadalupe. He constructed a shrine for her, and many others started to worship her as the mother of all, all humanity. As artists started to render her, they gave her darker skin to appeal to the natives. Carrera followed this trend and painted the Virgin with brown skin. Seeing the similarities between the Old World and New World Madonnas helped indigenous people to re-signify as new religions were introduced. To the right, we see Louis de Mena's Costa painting. A Costa painting shows the results of interracial mixing and belief in the dilution of pure Spanish, African, and indigenous blood. Costa paintings were common in Latin American art, but what makes this Costa painting different are the two distinct subject matters, the Virgin of Guadalupe and racial hierarchy. The great mystery of this painting is why de Mena chose to juxtapose these two themes. Looking at the hierarchy, 
Demena has chosen to place a Spanish woman and an indigenous man in the first casa set, which undermines the traditional assertion of a Spanish male being dominant in the social hierarchy. A similar trend continues for women in the painting. The virgin in this painting acts as a mediator who does not play favorites. Race and even gender are brought to greater equality compared to earlier Costa paintings. Demena includes a divine presence in Mexico's social hierarchy to create peace and order where inequality is present. Like with the Immaculate Conception, we see Demena welcoming the Brown Madonna, not just in religion, but culture and interracial mixing in the new world. As we move along, we see Miguel Cabrera's portrait of Sor Juana Inez de la Cruz. Sor Juana was a nun and an intellectual. She is dressed as a typical nun, but she is portrayed in a way that is very different from a typical nun portrait. Here, she looks towards the viewer and exhibits confidence. She also is surrounded by her library and learning instruments. While intellectual pursuits were common in the Catholic Church, it was uncommon for a woman to pursue knowledge in this way. Her intellect and devotion to religion may be viewed as at odds, but here Cabrera emphasizes both and shows how Sor Juana has molded her beliefs to build off each other. Up next is Felix Parra's Friar Bartolome de las Casas. Here we see a Dominican friar with a couple at his feet who were plagued by the violence of conquest as they came to pay respect to a loved one at an indigenous temple. The friar looks to the heavens to ask for forgiveness for the violence the conquest has brought upon them. Bartolome de las Casas wrote a book that defended indigenous people against the horrible violence they experienced because of the conquest of the New World. Here we see the artist, Felix Parra, create a scene that displays these feelings and condemns the acts of conquest. Parra and las Casas are bringing truth to light that the so-called noble Christian conquistadors who were supposed to bring civilization and salvation to the Americas, were committing genocide in their desire for wealth and glory. Las Casas too profited from the conquest and slave trade of the indigenous people in the beginning. Yet in his resignification, he saw the wrongs of it and warned others not to make the same mistake. Moving along, we come to the paintings by Angel Zaraga and Nambi Zanil. On the left is Exvoto San Sebastian by Angel Zaraga. The man on the right of Zaraga's composition is San Sebastian, who was an early Christian saint and martyr. San Sebastian is often worshipped as a protector. The scene is meant to depict a connection with God as the woman at his feet comes to pray. However, Zaraga models San Sebastian in a way that invokes lustful feelings in viewers. Zuraka was a romantic painter and therefore pushed the buttons of viewers even in religious works. A similar artwork by Nambi Zanil exhibits sexual desires in unison with spiritual desires. In his painting to the right entitled Benedicciones, he paints himself and his husband at the altar to be married before the Virgin of Guadalupe. Zanil paints himself in his artworks to represent others who are gay many of which are afraid to display it publicly. His displays of homosexuality go against what the Catholic Church believes, yet he paints the Virgin of Guadalupe and other Catholic figures alongside him because he believes that they will protect him from society's criticisms. Zanil believes that loving a man does not make him a sinner. Although this belief goes against what the Catholic Church teaches, he has embraced both homosexuality and Christianity in his life. Zaraga and Zanil are both bringing light to taboo topics such as sexuality and Christianity and have re-signified traditional beliefs in the church to honor both in their lives. Up next are two works by Leonora Carrington and Enrique Guzman. To the left, we see Carrington's The Old Mates. Women and animals are surrounding a kitchen table and at the center is a smaller figure with a spiked halo a common image in Catholicism. Carrington's works focus on blurring the divisions between the behaviors of humans, animals, and food. Animals eating alongside the woman, for example. As a surrealist painter, Carrington's works may seem otherworldly as she tries to bridge the gap between our conscious reality and things that we dream up in our heads. 
In her resignification, she has melded the Catholic influence around her and her interest in surrealism. She has created a truth for herself in the realms between conscious and subconscious thoughts. Looking to the right, we see Enrique Guzman's Imagine Milagrosa. At the focal point is an image of Christ, whose chest is open to reveal arrows going through his heart. This is a modified image of the Sacred Heart of Christ, where the heart of Jesus is seen as God's great love for mankind. The most peculiar elements in this work are two toilets. Jesus and toilets have no correlation, and it seems borderline blasphemous to place them in the same composition. Many Christians have criticized him for his work, yet he doesn't mean to offend or be critical of the Catholic Church. He has selected symbols from old urban culture, such as a toilet, to bring playfulness and a modern approach to a very t traditional organization. Guzman is taking the Catholic Church, which has seen very little change, and modernizing it in his resignification. Both Guzman and Carrington were forward-thinking artists who brought enlightened ideas to a stagnant organization. Last on our tour is Delilah Montoya's installation of El Guadalupano. Montoya draws from Mesoamerican culture and religion for her works. At the center of this installation is a photograph in black and white featuring a shirtless man who is handcuffed with a color tattoo of the Virgin of Guadalupe on his back. Surrounding this image are similar photographs in color and an altar set up on the floor. Throughout her works, she challenges outsider stereotypes of the Mesoamerican community. With this piece, Montoya critiques law enforcement in the United States and their treatment of Latinos due to assumptions and stereotypes. Montoya is helping others to re-signify their beliefs about the Mesoamerican community, and she displays the injustices brought towards the community. Thank you for following along on this tour today of Resignifying Religion. I hope you enjoyed your time. If you are interested in knowing more about the works and artists, feel free to take a look at the exhibition catalog following this presentation.